How fast can you go? A game that basically invented the speedrun almost 30 years ago is still running. A franchise that has grown with its audience. With six animated TV series, several ongoing comics and manga, backing up an empire of over 50 video games when you include mobile games and spin-offs. Diehard fans include M.I.A., John Carpenter, Lacey Chabert, Michael Jackson, Sam Montgomery, Wiz Khalifa, Karen Gillan, and many of you watching. Through imitation, parody, and duplication on the mass scale of the internet, the hedgehog with his catchphrases and vast media library of hits and flops were ripe for the age of memes. From poorly rendered fan art to poorly manufactured popsicles, the speedy blue hedgehog and his bi-tailed fox friend are culturally effed. And Knuckles. We don't always talk about video games on Culturally Aft, but when we do, it's to talk about memes. Sonic the Hedgehog is a franchise that needs no introduction. You can find a huge number of videos all over YouTube describing the history of this chili dog eating anthro, let's plays of every game, and montages of the funniest out of context jokes from one of his shows. So we here on Culturally Aft are not going to regurgitate a topic you've seen covered in more depth on other channels. No. Instead, we're going to talk about the cultural impact that Hedgehog has had on the internet. Today, we're talking about memes. The sometimes terribly drawn, sometimes horrifying, very shareable, top text, bottom text, memes. Something about Sonic and his popularity makes him especially susceptible to mimetic mutation. It's the process of an image or a joke being repeated or expanded upon and changed slightly with each iteration. Think of a remix of a remix of a remix ending up better than the original. Sonic was always marketed as a hip youth media to mix effect, which makes it all the more easy to poke fun of as this 30-year-old platformer drapes his skateboard over his shoulder and goes, How do you do, fellow kids? What? Adding on many catchphrases and one-liners for all the characters to spout sometimes to ironic and hilarious effect. A good example of this kind of internet mutation is the music of the game series. Green Hill Zone remixes and tracks from the game are constantly being remixed or covered right here on YouTube. Every platform, every instrument overlaid on, on other games and on speedruns to the point of cliché. When something that's already pretty cheesy to begin with goes on past cliché is when we get into some darker, more intense territory. Now I'm talking about YouTube poops, which is video remixes of old media. There are a lot of Sonic YouTube poops from his many cartoon and commercial appearances. For more information on YouTube poop, I've included some videos in the description. We still have a lot of memes to cover. From the comic series, it's Sonic's mighty lips that were memed across the comic art and out into the internet, pasted onto other the characters of the cartoons and real images for hilarious effect. When you have such an impressionable young demographic, you're going to get fan art. Really bad fan art. This laughable childish drawing of Sonic comes from such a humble source. Originally posted on the official Sonic fan site as early as 2004, it was rediscovered by users of YouTube forums in 2008. It's very likely that this is a genuine piece of crayon fan art by someone under the age of 8. As this memed and began to spin off variations, it would even make an appearance in the animated series Steven Universe. Nothing speaks to this amateur fan art like the parody turned explosive meme, Sanic Hedgehog. This childish doodle was first posted right here on YouTube in a really cringy video titled How to Draw Sanic Hedgehog in 2010. This eventually spread its way around the internet, inspiring lots of hilariously terrible fan art of the Blue Hedgehog, making Sanic synonymous with terrible renditions of Sonic. This particular meme would cement the misspellings associated with terrible artwork. Related to original characters as bad fan art, we should also mention Christianization of bad fan art. Possibly in response to Rule 34 art, this super clean meme is usually art of Sonic and friends in thoughtful prayer with a Bible quote or just hanging out with Jesus. Or sometimes Sonic is Jesus. 
These have their own parody as well in the Sonic Meme Blender, continuing the cycle of cringy art. Special mention here as well goes to the changed meaning Gotta Go Fast has during Ramadan. We've spoken a bit here on EFT about Mary Sue fanfictions, when a writer creates a character of themselves and inserts them into fanfiction. Sonic reaching a young audience with an easy to draw characters results in a myriad of fan created characters or new characters. It speaks to the overall popularity of the Blue Hedgehog, even if he is considered the underdog of gaming with flop after flop reboot attempts. Not only does this add to the already overwhelming pile of terrible art and stories, it also creates an environment of self-expression. These are likely some young fur's very first fursonas. The simplistic art design of the franchise makes it easy to draw and mimic stylistically, making it all the more appealing for young gamers still new to art. This includes this hybrid of Sonic and Pikachu that garnered a lot of teasing from all corners of the internet. The Sega team have not been blind to this. I mean, how could they with this immense library of memes fan art, and Mary Sue characters. In the latest official installment of the Sonic franchise, Sonic Forces, you can make your own character to race alongside the Blue Hedgehog, completing the circle of fandom. Now any number of terrible creations can feel canon. Your Sonic character is now canon. Your Sonic character is now canon. Everyone's Sonic character is now canon. As of this video, Sonic Forces has only been out for a few weeks and the internet has already created an army of virtual Sonic monstrosities. Which brings us to Ascended Memes. These are when memes and jokes catch the attention of the original creators, and they are written into canon or are in some way given a nod in-universe. Like the Sanic item you can add to in the Sonic Forces character creator. Sanic now has official Sega representation. Sonic, with the help of an internet-savvy marketing team, has more than a few memes ascended into canon. Creepy Pasta, a website dedicated to short form horror stories and images, has a few related to Sonic. The Tails doll was originally a one shot playable villain in Sonic R. The character limply goes through levels while an unsettling track plays over whatever the level music is. Fans started to write their own urban legends surrounding the doll making videos, sharing stories of the doll coming out of the game for evil or murderous intent. The Archie Comics series ended up turning the Tails doll into a bona fide eldritch abomination, ascending the meme. Sonic.exe is another bite of creepypasta about a haunted PC port of the original 1991 game, which in turn inspired an actual version of the evil copy of the game. Sort of like The Ring, but Sonic. PewDiePie and many other YouTubers have played through it. The original story was removed from the pasta site for being too poorly written and full of cliches. Not a creepy pasta, but might as well be Sonic Dreams is an unlicensed simulator by Arcane Kids Game Studio. The game has terrible animation, sexually explicit themes, and references to some of the stranger internet paraphilias. The game has four bizarre and uncomfortable modes, including a character creator, a mode where an armless Sonic feeds worms to a bird-like Eggman, a movie maker that gets way too weird, and a very unsettling My Roommate Sonic, where Eggman texts you to seduce Sonic. The incredibly uncomfortable project is available for free around the internet, and you can watch countless Let's Plays of this truly insane work. Sonic Dreams might as well be called Sonic Memes the Game. And Knuckles. Knuckles Sings is a series of animated Knuckles covers covering various songs and was adapted across YouTube for all manner of gag videos. It started as an animation test where the echidna sings, I don't want to set the world on fire. I don't want to set the world on fire. Originally from Sonic and Knuckles from 1994 and with the Sega Genesis's cartridge stacking lock-on gimmick technology, you could combine the game with other Sonic games, creating Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, which was meant to combine the games into one story and the other games would allow you to play through as the character Knuckles. This meant you could stack Sonic and Knuckles and Knuckles, where you could play through as Knuckles with an additional Knuckles companion to unlock a special Knuckles ending. This ridiculous stacking was taken over by Photoshop threads on 4chan, Reddit, and across the internet around 2012, prompted the memification of And Knuckles. Here I come 
rougher than knuckles. The best of them, tougher than knuckles. You can call me knuckles. Unlike knuckles, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my knuckles. Later to be embraced by the official Twitter. Let's talk about the official Twitter. Originally started by the Sega company to promote its flagship franchise, it was eventually taken over by Aaron Weber in June of 2015. Weber ran the Twitter differently, much differently. He started to respond to more comments, especially reviewers and fans, with quippy comebacks using the memes we've talked about so far. The official Sonic Twitter actually celebrates these corny memes and terrible fan art that make fun of the franchise. It's refreshingly self-aware for a capital B brand. Though it's still also used for regular Sega promotions, it still got itself over 4.25 million followers. It's said that Weber is leading the charge in ascending as many Sonic and Sanic memes as possible. Personally, I've never been a huge Sonic fan. I've only played a little bit of the games and I've never really seen any of the shows. The television series Sonic Boom shares some of this self-awareness that Twitter has and itself has created many memes of its own. Sonic's youthful nature, new batches of batty catchphrases and iconic style make him and his team chronically memeable. What is your favorite Sonic meme? Link it to us in the comments below and Rusty will share his favorites in our next F'd Up Date. I have been your host, RK. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned because First Shooting at History is coming out soon. The script is finalized and we're recording very, very shortly. Make sure you're subscribed to Culturally Eft and tell all your friends about our new miniseries. Also, happy holidays. Please check out our web store at culturallyeft.com if you live in the US. You can also get a pay what you can HQ download of our Fox Wars poster in the link in the description to print out at home or locally at any size. Now here's Rusty to close us out. Hey guys, it's Dr. Rusty here with your test results back. Uh, uh, I'm sorry to say you have a very severe culturally F deficiency. The only way to cure that is by subscribing and consuming culturally F at least, at least once a week. If you want to inoculate yourself and make sure you don't get it again, you should try getting one of our t-shirts you can get at culturallyf.com. Sign up to our newsletter for more updates on that. Uh, you should also consider supporting us on Patreon a great way not to get this thing happening again. I've been your host, Dr. Rusty, definitely not a doctor. Get effed every night and call me in the morning.